Hey, it's Kathy, and recently in my show prep, I was reading about the fact that there is a 3D printer that can make a pizza. And I thought, no way, and how do 3D printers work anyhow? So I called Kevin Cheddarquist of Denfeld's Fab Lab, which I thought meant fabulous lab, but it actually means fabrication lab. And I wanted him to walk us through that process. So thanks for having us today. And, and let's start out in the classroom because that's where the concepts are born, right? Exactly. Explain that a little bit. What, what do you have the students do? So our students are taking uh, solutions to problems, and they could be very complicated problems or designing the next tissue boxes, which our students are doing. And, uh, and they will take their idea uh, from their mind uh, and put it into a group, kind of a hopper. And then they'll sketch and then uh, actually put this into a 3D uh, program called SolidWorks. And SolidWorks will then uh, allow to have a virtual tissue box uh, solution and then we take that and put a certain file format called STL and we can 3D print that. So you can take your solutions then and take it to a client uh, and test it out and find out if this really is the solution you want to work with before you go into fabrication. And how many students typically are in your classroom? Because I see so many computers sitting here. It's a popular class, so we have about 30, and we have students that have now taken it a number of times, so our problems are getting more sophisticated, and, uh, and we're uh, being courted in fact by a local industry to take uh, their problem and try to solve it and see what we can come up with. Oh, that's cool. So the community is getting involved in the Fab totally. Lab here at Denfeld as well. Yeah. So the concept is born, you've put it uh, into into like a conceptual, I don't know, like a 3D, mm -hmm. but, but it's still on, on paper or on the computer. Where do we go from here? So the, the concept of having it there allows you to manipulate it, you can deform it, you can do things uh, virtually uh, that'll help you make a decision whether this is the right solution or not. Um, and you could ship that then to Nigeria, to Norway. Um, you could go all over to wherever your client is and get more uh, possible solutions or get some feedback. Uh, but then you have a choice at that point and you could send it to a CNC mill, for example, and cut it out. And um, CNC stands for? Computer Numeric Controlled. And, uh, and so uh, there's lots of tools and the Fab Lab has routers and uh, plasma torches and milling machines, all CNC. So the old shop of using tools, hand tools, is still here, but we now have computers uh, that allow us to work faster, more sophisticatedly, and integrate with uh, other populations. So the computers actually run the machines? They do. Let's take you there. All right. But now we need to make it tangible. So how does that happen? Layer by layer, like a big sandwich. And um, the, this piece right here took about 700 layers, uh, each one about uh, a thousandth of an inch. And uh, so this would have uh, the computer telling the 3D printer what area was going to be model or, or keeper and what part was going to be a support material or where there wasn't going to be any material. So you could uh, turn this, you could turn it any way you wanted to and to print it and, and it would try to do that print. So what does the material look like that it's made out of? So this is a sample filament and this is called ABS and, uh, and it's fairly rigid, fairly strong. Uh, it's not waterproof, uh, so you can't make cups that would hold liquid. But uh, the So purpose... this was made out of yellow? Yes, okay. exactly. And, in, and it's paintable, so you could paint it after the fact. But now they have uh, filaments that are different material that are pliable, uh, so you can do Gumby kind of deals. Um, some have metal impregnation, um, and of course there's organic and all kinds of other ones out there. And this machine is actually making something like this right now? It is, and uh, this is uh, our little Athenia 480. So the build area is uh, small, uh, but it's a very reliable printer. And uh, so the file was on the computer and it's sent over. And now this print might take uh, oh, four or five hours, uh, layer by layer. As long as nobody shuts off the power, we're good. So now you have this um, like design. This is just the, uh, what, did, what did you call it? It's just the like, um, the protege for it, oh, now prototype. they have to, or prototype, and yep. now they just have to make it? How does that happen? Right, okay, so then uh, the idea of the team looking at this, the client looking at this, 
deciding that they do like this. Uh, we made a number of prototypes for the robotics team and they would then test it on the robot, find that there needed to be different angles, different considerations. But once that decision is made, and hopefully quickly and cheaply, uh, then you go to the expensive thing of using tools and machines, uh, mills, lathes, uh, write code, and then fabricate it next door. So you do that right here? Yeah. Let's go there now. So now we are in the third and final process of when the Denfeld students at the Fab Lab are making something, their project. And so explain a little bit because there's certainly a lot of equipment here. Yeah, so we don't have like 20 table saws. Okay, so this is a fabrication lab. And so the idea is we have tools and we have powerful tools that uh, are run by computers uh, to be able to create uh, a model. And that should be a full size model. Uh, it could be out of wood, could be out of acrylic, some plastics, or it could be out of metal. So we have a welding lab over there. Uh, we have precision machining uh, vertical mills and uh, engine lathes coming. Uh, but the idea is no matter what the material is, you could make then a, proto a, a model that would then further progress your, your development. Um, and, and this is the cool thing for the kids, that most of them have never used this the community hasn't even really used this. No, I think this is so cool. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone from the idea in their head to putting that into a computer to making, you know, this is what I want to do, to making it tangible with the 3D printer, which is why we're here, but then taking it a step further, they can actually make something that, that takes their idea and sh they can show it to a client or show it to their parents. Yep. So what's that? This is a lamp. Oh, okay. So uh, they're going to have to electrify it and uh, they're going to need to, uh, and so there were eight teams, eight three-person teams, and uh, and so they all came up with their own solution and Friday's the deadline, so we'll see what, what it is. Okay, well, and uh, I know that earlier you were talking about safety, 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 because these are the these are the actual equipment that like our, our community uses when they're out doing their jobs. Yes. Correct. Yes. It's not something that's made for high school students, and so not only are they taught how to use the equipment, but they're taught about safety for for themselves and for the people that they're working with as well. Yeah, we haven't had any accidents, and uh, the but the idea of, model. of them uh, being able to learn this and be able to use it. So we have internships that are now developing with area businesses. Uh, we have articulation agreements with the colleges, so what they're learning in CNC and CAD, they're able to take that to Lake Superior College and receive credit for that, um, getting to that next step. We, we see that as the purpose of high school, but we want to reach out to the community, so this fabrication lab, Fab Lab, is going to be available for communities as well. And you're going to do the adult classes, is yep. that what you're talking about? Yep. So are you, do you have any going yet? No, not yet. Uh, we just, this just opened uh, December 14th. Oh. So uh, we, wow. yeah, it's still quite fresh. Yeah. Paint's still I know. drying, but uh, uh, we, um, we're we looking forward to, you know, a really robust future. Uh, we have a great partner in the Duluth Makerspace. They, they see the possibilities with us and uh, in the community ed department, so it's going to be fun. That's so awesome. Well, Kevin Chatterquist, he's the instructor here at the Fab Lab, Fabrication Lab at Denfeld High School. Thank you for your time, and you're doing a great job with our, our students you. and soon with our community.